Hi, I'm Jonathan Gardner. We're going to cover uh, section 4.21 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamic Second Edition. Uh, I'm going to move fast, but you can always rewind. If you appreciate what I'm doing, be sure to like and share with your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, you can always you know add your comment in the comments below or do a video response. So let's get started. Bound charges. So when we have objects or you know we're thinking large scale now billions and billions and billions of, of atoms and um, we have a, a net polar polar polarization of this material and the question is like what kind of electric field what, what kind of potential does this produce and it's easier to work with the potential so we'll work with the potential so we found earlier in back in chapter three that the potential due to a dipole a pure dipole one over four pi epsilon naught in the r hat direction what dot the dipole moment over r squared. Okay, so you basically see how the point you're interested in looking at dots with the dipole moment that you're talking about and you divide it by the distance uh, squared. Um, nothing surprising there. Then the next question is, well let's expand this to an, an integral of sorts. So we bring it up to v equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the sum of all these tiny dipole moments. Well, what's P vector? Well, that's big P uh, dot the volume element that we're talking about. So big P dot d tau dot, no, just times t tau. Um, we're going to do r hat dot the big P. So this is not a dot. That's, that's not an x. It's nothing. Divided by r squared. Okay. And the next bit is he pulls this trick that's really actually quite cool. So remember when back in chapter one, you did an exercise that says, what is the gradient of 1 over r? And you said, oh, that's just r hat over r squared. Well, looky here, we have r hat over r squared. So let's plug this in. So we get this is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the integral, and he writes it out this way, uh, p vector, big P vector, dot this gradient of 1 over r d tau, okay? And then he pulls out from uh, the inside cover of your book, product rule number five, which I'll write for your reference, which, double check this product, yes, it is five. This looks like this. It says the divergence of some scalar field times some vector field is equal to the scalar field times the divergence of the vector field plus the vector field dot the gradient of the scalar field. Okay? Um, and he goes, hey, look at here. This looks like this term right over here. Let me mark that in yellow. Or in orange. Orange is always nice. I like oranges. That looks a lot like that. So this is going to equal that minus that, and so we get times the integral of this, the divergence of the scalar field times the vector field, so that's p vector over r, um, and minus the scalar field times the gradient of the vector field. Okay, and then he pulls this out to um, two separate integrals. The first integral, he looks at that and says, I'm going to apply, so this is a volume integral, right? Volume over the, the material that we polarized. And this is the gradient. Well, you can apply, you know, Gauss's law, Green's theorem, whatever theorem you want to call it, and turn that into the surface integral of um, 1 over r p vector dot da vector, right? And you can subtract out of that the volume integral of the divergence of 1 over r, the divergence of the, the polarization. Okay. Um, so this looks an awfully lot like you're integrating over some surface charge, right? And 
So we can say that we're going to invent the surface bound charge is going to be equal to the polarization dot the normal vector at the surface. Okay, so the vector pointing directly outside of whatever surface it is you're working with. Put that in a box. And I'm going to run out of room, aren't I? And this, you have a negative gradient, negative divergence, I mean. Well, doesn't that look like the earlier equation where we calculated that the divergence of the electric field is equal to the, 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 the volume charge, the charge density. So we're going to invent a, free, a bound charge density. We'll get to free charges later. And we're going to call that the negative of the divergence of the polarization. Big P. Okay. And now we can rewrite this as, and I did run out of room. Uh, the potential is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. The surface integral of the object that we're interested in of 1 over r times the bound surface charge times the total area my, uh, plus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the volume integral of 1 over r times the bound volume density charge, volume charge density times the volume there. Okay. So this makes things a lot easier because now we can just think about the surface charge and we can think about the 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 charge inside, you know, and now we can do all our calculations without having to work very hard. Okay. So to give a good example, um, example two. Find the electric field produced by a uniformly polarized sphere of radius r. So we have a sphere, a solid sphere, that's uniformly polarized. That means everywhere p vector is the same, whatever it is. Okay. And I think I just did it backwards. Yes, I did it backwards. I am always good at giving you backwards vectors. So it's pointing up, not down. Okay. So we're going to align the polarization of the sphere, whatever it is, with the z-axis. Um, use spherical coordinates, of course. And we can calculate, using our formula that we just found, so we can calculate the surface charge, the bound surface charge density, is equal to the polarization in the normal to the surface. Well, the polarization is pointing up everywhere, and so we're going to get p cos theta, cos theta being the z-component of n hat. Okay? And the the next thing we want to find out is what is the free or bound, I'm sorry, bound charge density on the inside. Well, that's equal to the divergence of p since p is constant, the divergence is 0. So there's no surface charge or there's no volume charge on the inside. Using our results from example 9 of chapter 3. So example 9 of chapter 3, where we had a surface charge of this. This was when we were dealing with Laplace's equation. We had the, the potential given any r and theta is equal to p over 3 epsilon naught r cos theta uh, inside the sphere and it's equal to p over 3 epsilon naught r cubed over the distance we are at r squared cos theta where r is greater than e or equal to r. Okay, That was a fun video. Go back and look at that if you, if you want to remember. So r cos theta is equal to z z and so the electric field is equal to negative the gradient of the potential so on the inside of the, of the sphere, our electric field, negative the gradient of the potential, which is going to be equal to uh, dz by d of this by dz in the z, z direction. So that's just p 
over epsilon naught z hat direction. Okay, that's inside. Outside, the uh, potential is um, kind of the potential looks like on the outside what you would get for a perfect dipole at the origin. So you take this term and you divide it by r squared and then you have basically you can take the volume of this which is four thirds pi r cubed and you end up with this. So you get v on the outside one over four pi epsilon naught p vector dot r hat over r squared that's when r is greater than or equal to r and of course the dipole moment you're using here is equal to four thirds pi r cubed times the polarization of material okay so this behaves exactly like a dipole moment at the origin so we can draw that and it's actually fun to look at. It looks like this. So we start with our perfect circle. Um, I'm always perfect at drawing circles, of course. And I'm being sarcastic there. And that actually was a pretty good circle. So the electric field is constant and pointing down. Um, so we go boosh, boosh. At least let's draw field lines. Let's do field lines. I like field lines. Field lines make me happy. So there's some nice field lines pointing down. And then we have the curly of the um, dipole moment. Why does this point in the same direction? That doesn't seem right. Seems like it should point in the opposite direction. Anyway, I'll follow what the book has because I've been wrong more than once. And that kind of goes up and around. It goes that way. This goes this way. Oh yeah, that's right, because the positive charge is up here and the negative charge is down here. Anyway. So then this goes up, and this goes up. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to draw a guy over here too, just because I want to make it look super happy. This guy goes all the way out there. This guy goes all the way out there. OK. That's kind of what you get. And the book has a better picture than I can ever draw. And they do it in less time too, because you just have to look at it. You don't have to draw it yourself. Anyway, hope that helps. Um, it was a rather fun problem to solve. Uh, so when you're thinking of, of the polarization of materials, Stop thinking of polarization and start thinking about the surface bound charge and the volume bound charge. Thanks.